All right, I'm using a uh, OpenSUSE 11.4 with a GNOME 3 desktop, and uh, you know I, I've actually been using it for like about a day or two, and um, I meant to do a video earlier about it, but I, I've been in and out of town, so so now I've actually spent some time with it. You know, I can kind of give you a little bit of overview about it, and it's actually pretty good. I do like it, but um. Well, it's one of those things where I'm, I guess you can say I'm not really ready for it, you know? Like, I like it a lot, but I just don't see myself using it on a daily basis kind of a thing, you know? But uh, other than that, you know, it's pretty clean. It's real simple. I, I, one thing I can say about it, it's very fast. You know, it's real snappy. Um, but um, if you're not a, a, if you're just a, a standard, you know, Ubuntu user and you're switching to OpenSUSE, there's some things I got to, like, show you first. So let's, uh, well, to launch an app... You know, it's similar to Unity. Hit the window key or or the super key, and type something. So I'm gonna type uh, I think install. So, uh, but instead of doing this, the install or the software update or whatever, um, you're better off just like clicking all applications over here, and scroll all the way down until you find a Yast right here, and just give your password. And, uh, you know, you click on this. Let me see, where is it at? At the very bottom here, where it says Software Management, click on that. And this is a basically like the Ubuntu Software Center. And, um, you know, it takes a couple seconds. It's not, too, and, you know, it's not very, very fast, but it, it works. And, uh, you know, first thing to do when you, when you install this thing, if you choose to, uh, run your updates, then uh, restart the system and... Uh, and you know, then uh, start in installing software. You know the things that you want to use and need. But the uh, the problem I had, um, you know, being a an Ubuntu user is uh, looking for the you know the the extras. You know, Ubuntu restricted extras, and, and here it's called restricted formats. And uh, to get that, the easiest way I found was uh, to go on the internet. You know, just launch Firefox. And uh, what I what did I type? I t think. Let me see. OP, there it is. I know it's totally misspelled, but where's it at? There it is. Once you type OpenSUSE restricted formats, it's the very first link. And uh, it's actually pretty easy to install. And when you do this, it'll install your, your Flash and Java and your, uh, I believe, the GStreamer and stuff like that. So go down to the bottom. I mean, not to the bottom, but where your version, which is 4. Point, I mean, 11.4. Click on the formats, restrictive formats, and uh, go down to the bottom, and you'll see the little GNOME, you know, symbol, and click on this. And when you click on this, it'll actually open up your package manager, and it'll just make a little, uh, like a shopping list. You know, just grab everything you need. And when you actually install it, um, like sit tight for a bit, and you know, and uh, let it do its business. But um, you're gonna have to be clicking like, you know, import key or next or whatever. So. You know, just as you as it's installing, you know, just stick around while it's doing it. Anyways, as for the desktop, it's really clean, really simple. Um, to actually maneuver it and get around, um, you have to like either hit the the window key, or uh, you know, swipe your your mouse to the top left, or just click the activity button. And uh, let me get the uh, home folder here. Let me click on this and. Um, there is no minimize, so you can't just you know minimize anything. And there's no close. There is a close button, but there's no minimize button or maximize button. To maximize, you can just drag it up to the top, or uh, double click it. And there's also the snapping feature as well to you know snap to the left or to the right, like so. Do that again. There we go. And uh, so to minimize a program, there's a few ways to do it. You can hold Control Alt. And press down, and it's not really minimizing. It's what it's doing, it's creating a new desktop. So let me go back to my activities, and to the far right, you'll see uh, my desktops. You know, right now this is my recorder. I'm using FFmpeg to record, and this is the uh, the minimized or the new desktop I created, or moved away, and this is the one I created. So. So let's try to open up two uh, applications. So I want two home folders. So how do I do that? So swipe again, go to your home folder here, or your file browser, right click, and select new new window. 
and now you have two of them. So let's say you want to see both of them side by side. Just swipe up to the left like so. Or if you just want to minimize one, drag it to the new desktop and let go. Then just select which one you want to see, like so. All right. Now, <laughs> now if you want to, you know, put them back together, just drag them, you know, drag it back up to the, you know, to the second bra browser or the file browser. Now, uh, yeah, that's how you do it. So it's kind of like it's a learning curve. I got to say that, you know, it's it's different. You know, it's it's cool, but at the same time, it can be very confusing. You know. I mean, if anything, if I had a touch screen, I think it'd be awesome, but I don't have a touch screen because <laughs> it does look, you know, it, 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 I think it would be a lot easier if you had a touch screen. Like for one thing, if you, instead of having to go over here to the right, you can simply just drag your mouse, you know, down like this to bring it back or drag it up. You know, that's another way of minimizing too. So there's actually a few ways you can do it, you know, but I don't think you can do it with the scroll wheel. No, you can't. So anyways, so that's that on that. And as far as the, the the little dock over here, it's not really a dock. It's mainly just a little launcher. Like in Unity, the the dock has a lot of function to this. So this is basically like to pin apps to it. So if I want to like pin an app, let me uh, find something. So let me type something like uh, like web. All right, I can just drag it in here and uh, let go, and it pins it. And notice on the bottom, see that's your notification. Like. On the other standard desktop, the, the, the 2 Series, GNOME 2, all your notifications are on the top right, and that's not there anymore. So every time you get a notification, it's at the bottom, right? Or like in the Ubuntu uh, desktop, it has like the little, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, uh, was it a uh, ODS or something? Notify? I can't remember what's the pronunciation on that, but... It, it doesn't it's not existing here it, it's all at the bottom so when something like a new email or new IM it'll pop up and say hey you know something's new and as far as like the, the top panel you can't really do much to it it's all locked down um, as far as theming it I, I can't figure out how to theme it but I know you can theme the uh, the file browser you can change different themes if you like um, and you can't move anything you know, I haven't figured out if we can, but everything just, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, let me think. Uh, what else can I show you? I think if you type something like uh, Google, oops, like that, you can actually search, like, the web for it, like Wikipedia. And it should open up Firefox. So that's pretty cool. I, I like that. You know, that's a cool little feature. I kind of wish Unity had that one. Well, it does, but I think it's not as, not as uh, easy as that. So that's pretty cool. What else can I say? Well, this is mainly just like a little introduction kind of a thing. I'm still using it. I'll probably make some more videos about it. You know, I'm still learning it. You know, it's it's a big difference. Okay, it's huge difference. But uh, oh, so far like I'm I like it, but I just don't see myself using it full time just yet. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of it has to do with the notifications thing kind of thing. You know, a lot of the applications don't work yet because of the notification icon that, that's supposed to be up here on the old 2 series it's not there anymore like I couldn't use my re, you know GTK record my desktop for this little overview because of that little icon not being there so I had to use uh, this right here the FFmpeg with the terminal but anyway so far it's 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 different it's a lot different and um, I don't know I don't know what to say about it really you know oh yeah and there's no desktop either what can I say uh, like if you try to drag and drop a folder onto the desktop, you know, it doesn't it doesn't go. So there's no desktop icons or anything, you know, none of that stuff. You know what I mean? So other than that, you know, it doesn't use compiz, it uses what's it called? Mutter or utter. So whatever it's using, it's pretty cool. I mean it's quick. You know, I like that. So uh anyways, that's it for now. I'll probably go over some more stuff about, you know, installing packages and repositories. That's kind of this. That's some of the stuff I had to learn myself. So I, I want at least want to you know share that with you guys. So, so anyways, if I had to recommend this, uh, the GNOME 3, I do recommend doing the OpenSUSE one because I tried the uh, GNOME 3 with the uh, the Ubuntu uh, Unity with the PPA, and it was crashing like crazy. So I rather it's, you're better off just you know downloading the the OpenSUSE version of it and just doing a fresh start. You know it actually works a lot better. So, anyways, that's it for now. So uh, I'll see you in a, in a day or so.